I mean, to be frank, civilization is feeling a little fragile these days. SpaceX founder Elon Musk is worried about the future of humanity on Earth. His backup plan, the Starship. Captain, you let them see our ship. No, not that Starship. Jump. Not that one either. This Starship. He wants to use that to first send humans back to the moon and then to settle a self-sustaining city on Mars. SpaceX says it's the most powerful rocket ever created, surpassing Saturn V, which landed humans on the lunar surface. Standing at 394 feet tall and 30 feet in diameter, SpaceX says Starship will be able to carry over 100 metric tons into Earth orbit. Pretty epic. The Starship is formed of two parts. Professor Lucy Berthoud teaches space engineering at the University of Bristol. There's a bottom bit, which is a super heavy booster, which is like a rocket. And then the top bit, which is carries the cargo or the payload or the people. And those two together are also called the Starship. The Starship is powered by over 30 Raptor engines. Once in orbit, the super heavy booster would separate from Starship and return to Earth to be caught mid-air by a large pair of robotic arms. The booster actually, even though it's gigantic, uh, will come back in about six minutes. The propellant pumps are designed to fill the rocket in uh, about half an hour. Starship would link with a rocket in low Earth orbit to supply it with more propellant and then continue on its mission. SpaceX says that could include sending as many as 100 human passengers to Mars, sending cargo to the Red Planet, or putting satellites into orbit. The ship is probably reusable about every six to eight hours. That's, uh, that's why we say sort of three times a day for the ship. After a few high altitude failures, SpaceX was able to land Starship, you know, the top part. In May of 2021, it successfully touched down from about six miles above Earth without bursting into flames. Despite arguing the industry is lagging behind and having missed a few deadlines himself, Musk has said he thinks SpaceX can get humans to Mars by 2026. I do think 2026 is really ambitious. He has said worst case 10 years. I think that's uh, much more doable, but we do need to ensure the safety of the people who are going to Mars. Now you can only go to Mars every two years, and I think maybe roughly you need about a million tons on Mars to have a, a self-sustaining city. The, the holy grail breakthrough that's needed is a rapid and completely reusable rocket system. This is absolutely critical for going to Mars. Uh, you're going to need to take lots of experimental materials, you're going to need to take lots of food with you, uh, and also some water uh, for all your inhabitants. So single-use rockets won't cut it. Elon Musk came to the planetary science and engineering community. He said, I want to go to Mars, so what do I need to do? That's right, we talked to Bill Nye. And everybody told him, you've got to lower the cost of getting to low Earth orbit. They have achieved it. SpaceX is now absolutely the most reliable, lowest cost vehicle going right now. Nye is staunchly in favor of exploration, but he has concerns about settling humans on Mars, at least right away. It's really amazing how hostile it is. It looks like places on Earth, but it's not. I mean, there's nothing to breathe and it's fantastically cold. Well, you just live in this dome. Okay, then we're going to go outside. What are you going to do? You're going to put on a spacesuit to go outside, which is just another dome. <laughs> Nye doesn't want the push to live on Mars to ruin our chance to learn about life on Mars. It's very reasonable to me that there's something alive on Mars right now. And I'm talking about a microbe. I'm talking about something that lives under thin layers of rock. And we'd go there and we'd set up a settlement and screw it up. I would like us to investigate that thoroughly before we go setting up camp and throwing styrofoam cups all over the ground. If you found evidence of life, it would change the course of history. The experts agree that prudent settlement of Mars could contain lessons for life back on Earth. We need to live in a really small, contained, sustainable way using minimal power, using minimal water, and recycling as much as possible. I think it's a real opportunity for us to start with a clean sheet. How would you like it to be if you started again with society? How can we set up a society that is the best 
of what we have here on Earth. I mean, I think excitement and adventure and uh, a sense of possibility about the future are incredibly important, uh, otherwise why live?